stabler fracture, posterior column fracture. Posterior column fracture. Basically, there is disruption of the ischium. The ischial component of the stabulum is free. The fracture line usually originate at the greater sciatic notch, and this can injure the superior gluteal artery and nerve. In the fracture line travels across the stabulum and the exit at the obturator foramen, and the issue pubic ramus usually is fractured. The iliopectineal line is intact, and the iliopectineal line is disrupted. Medial displacement of the femoral head can occur. That injury is seen in the iliac view. Medial displacement of the femoral head may look like protrusion of the stabulum. This injury represents one pattern of posterior hip dislocation that is frequently accompanied by injury to the sciatic nerve. CT scan will show the coronal orientation of the posterior column fracture. In general, column fractures divide the stabulum into front and back parts. It is a coronal fracture or a horizontal fracture, and you can see how the fracture appear coronal at different levels of the stabulum. The CT scan showing the coronal orientation of the posterior column fracture which is different than the oblique orientation of the posterior wall fracture. In general, there is a difference in orientation of different fractures on the CT scan. The column fracture anteriorly or posteriorly will be horizontal. A transverse fracture will be vertical or sagittal. The wall fracture will be oblique. Posterior column and posterior wall fracture. It is the only associated fracture that does not involve both columns. In this fracture, you reduce the posterior column first, and then you reduce the posterior wall, and then you fix both. Insert the screws for the posterior plate into the safe zone of the stabulum and away from the danger zone of the stabulum. During posterior approach to the hip, protect the sciatic nerve, which can be injured from the injury or from the surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.